Welcome to Grim 3D. Today we are going to find a better heating solution for the Monster's 500 millimeter bed. Stay tuned. So before we get started, a couple of things. Number one, subscribe. If you like what I'm doing, you're paying attention, you're following along, click that red subscribe button. Thank you very much. Second thing, today I'm going to be messing with mains power from my house. I am not an electrician, a pretty smart guy, do-it-yourselfer. I've played around with electricity my whole life from electronics projects all the way up to motors and full-on power from my house, alternating current, whatever. Please don't try this at home. Know that I'm not an expert and anything that you try, anything that you do based on this is at your own risk. I'm just trying this out. If it doesn't work, I'll probably just dump the whole project in the trash. If it gives me any trouble, if I find heat where there shouldn't be heat, if I find sparks, if I find anything that makes me think that my house or my situation is at risk, I'm gonna dump it. All right, so try it at your own risk. I just wanted to show people what I'm doing. Also, another thing is I really wanna get this video to come in under 10 minutes. So I'm not gonna show every single step, but I'm gonna show specific checkpoints, make sure you know what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how it's done. Let's get started. So what you're looking at is you're looking at a heating pad that I bought from AliExpress. Now the vendor of this is a DRJ RSB store, and I'm not exactly sure what that stands for, but this guy, the person that made this, the store that makes this, they make these custom. Now I did not send them the design for this. This was sent to them by a user that is in the D9 Facebook page. So I'm assuming, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm assuming that all of these holes are put exactly where the D9 needs them to be for the pins to go through or the bolts to go through because remember on the D9 underneath, there's an aluminum frame right here. Now, why am I doing this? And, and I mean, this is big, this is huge, okay? But why am I doing this? You'll know that the, notice that the D9, or if you've got a D9 500, you'll know that the heating pad for the D9's heat bed is about this big right in the middle. It's, it's literally about a fifth of the, side of the size of the bed. And then first of all, the biggest problem that that creates for me is the fact that when that big aluminum bed warms up from the middle, it actually warps. And I am working on a video right now to show how that warpage works. And I'll, I'll put it in here after this. But the biggest problem that I have is even with the auto bed leveling, if you start to heat that up and you get up to temperature and then you run the auto bed leveling, you've just got the middle of the bed heated up. The, the middle versus the side can be as much as 20 or 30 degrees centigrade difference. Okay, so the bed actually warps in the middle, warps up top and curves down the edge, which I'll show you in the video. But my biggest problem is, is that even if you, if you heat it up and it creates that warp and then you punch the auto bed leveling, as the bed stays heated for a long time, the rest of the aluminum starts to radiate heat out from the middle and all of a sudden the bed starts to warp closer to flat or closer to straight as it was in the beginning. And my bed is very straight until you heat it up. But as that warp diminishes through longer and longer print, it causes weird things to happen with your print. So the auto bed leveling then becomes almost worthless because the bed does not hold the same amount of warp the whole time. So this actual heater will heat all the way to the edge and it does have a center section that will heat all by itself because it's a two-part heater, but I'm just gonna put them both together. I mean, I can't imagine why I'd want the center to heat with this bed heater versus the whole thing, because then I'm right back to a warping bed, which has really been driving me crazy. It makes the bed leveling almost impossible. It makes the auto bed leveler almost worthless, and your printer becomes 500 millimeters of unusable space when you really can only print right in the middle 
where it's warm and where printer can calculate the, the warpage and the level of the bed. When you're talking about a 0.1 or 0.2 millimeter bed level, any warpage is nasty. And let's look at that warpage. Now this heater, I'm going to modify. This is the part where try it at your own risk. It comes with its own PID controller. The PID controller is a pretty good unit. You can set it for whatever you want. But I have two problems with this. Number one, I want the main board inside the printer to be able to run this heat bed. And the second problem is, is this heat bed pulls about 1500 watts and I don't have that kind of power left in this room. So if I run this heater full bore where it's supposed to be plugged in, I'm gonna be flipping breakers. So I have two other devices to solve the problem. This right here, this is a solid state relay. Let me get that up there a little bit closer. Get a little bit focused on that maybe. Solid state relay, I purchased this off Amazon. Okay, and what it does is it has two pins for a voltage, it can take as its input voltage anywhere from four to 32 volts DC. And the controller on my main board runs at 24 volts on the D9, so I'm right in there. And there's an output, and basically this is just a switch. It can control anywhere from 24 to 480 volts AC, okay, at 25 amps. So I'm looking to run this at 120 volts AC off my mains, and it's gonna be at about 10 amps. Okay, so I'm well within the specs of this. Now this needs to stay cool. I can get a heat sink for this, but I am going to actually just mount this to the side of my aluminum frame on the D9, and that big aluminum frame is gonna become the heat sink. I really do not expect this to get very warm when it's running at less than half of its capacity. So there's that. And with this device, I can have the main board in the D9 control this solid state relay, which will then turn this on and off just the same as it would turn on and off its own 24 volt bed heater. Okay, the second thing I'm gonna do is, this is huge wattage. Like if I set this, if I was to set this for 60 degrees C, and hit go on it. This would be up to 60 degrees C in about four seconds. But at the same time, it would draw a ton of wattage and probably trip a breaker. So I am found this device right here. Now this is technically, it is a basically a fan controller. So what it's gonna do is I'm gonna have my inputs here go in and then this is basically a control on the amount of power that comes out the outputs. So I can actually control the wattage of this bed with this. And now it's, it's controllable with the knob, but I'm just really gonna set it for one setting. I would like this maybe to pull 800 watts, would be pretty good, maybe in the 700 watt range. I really don't need it to heat up that fast. So I can spare some wattage, turn it down a little bit, and this is the little deal that I expected that I expect to do that now. This right here at 120 volts AC, this can control up to 4,000 watts. So I'm well within any of the specs on this pad to control with this or to limit the wattage with this device. And then I'm well within the specs of this device. So I have a lot of headroom here and this PID controller uh, that came with the bed uh, I'm not really going to use it all. So I got some ideas on how I'm going to hook all this up. I'm going to bench test it first. I'm going to hook it up here on the bench and test it to make sure it's giving me the wattage that I need and that I can control it with 24 volts. 
and then I'm going to take this and go ahead and put it on the bed of the D9. Stay tuned. <clears throat> so here's what I've done so far. This fan controller, which does kick out 120 volts no matter what, so it's actually an intermittent controller or a, a pulse controller, which is awesome, is set to allow about 700 watts through at a time. So that's with my, my, uh, my kilowatt I've got over there is reading. When I turn this on, read 700 watts, so that's perfect. Could maybe be a little bit higher, but it still warms up pretty fast at 700 watts. And so this is the line and the, and the neutral coming in. So then this line and the neutral comes out here, and this one jumps over into this switch, which then runs into these wires. So since this is a, a two-part heating pad and I want both parts to run at the same time, I just run those wires together here. So then my circuit goes through there and out there. And, and then here's my thermistor connector, which has already got an end on it to plug into my D9's main board. This is supposed to be a 100K thermistor and the D9's bed thermistor is obviously 100K. I just tested it with an ohm meter and it gave me the exact reading it should be given me. However, this one, for some reason, even though it was billed as a 100K thermistor, it's giving me kind of a wonky reading. So um, by the time I plug it in there, I'll have to see what temperature the D9's main board believes the bed is at just room temperature. So that might be a test that I'm going to have to do. Um, also, if this thermistor that's built into the heated, heated bed does not work for me, I'll just find a way to embed the original underneath it um, and just run the original thermistor because that's kind of a closed loop system. It just comes from the board through the thermistor back into the board. So it doesn't actually have to be this one. I can just bundle this up on the bottom of the board and let it dangle, and put a zip tie on it or something. So that's my backup plan. So here's my solid state relay. Uh, this relay, this side of it, is for DC voltage to activate the relay, which then activates this switch. And I have these leads coming over here that go over to my 24 volt bench power supply. And so I got the positive connected already. This is the negative. And I can't get that in camera as my leads are too short, but you will notice that when I connect this, the light comes on and immediately this starts heating up. It's pulling about 700, let's see, the kilowatt says 743 watts. This is already getting warmer than I want it to be right now. So I'm gonna disconnect this. It's instant on, instant off. It's working fantastic. This device right here is creating a little tiny bit of a buzz, but when the printer's printing and the fans are running, you won't even notice that. So then my idea with this is I'm gonna take these two devices and I'm going to use some T-nuts and I'm literally going to screw those with some T-nuts right on the side 4040 extrusion along the bottom of my printer. So then this cord will just be running back and forth with the bed. It's plenty long. I got, I got plenty of cord here. It's plenty long to run back and forth with the bed. It will drag on the table a little bit, which is fine. And then this black one will go into the main board. So that should work fine too. It'll just kind of be on its own. They'll be separated. And then the two leads that currently run the heated bed that's installed on the D9 already, they will come to here. So that when the D9 thinks it's heating its own bed, it will literally just be turning this solid state relay on and off. So the D9 should be in full control of a full heated bed, 500 by 500 millimeters. Actually, this is more like 520 by 520 because the D9 bed's a little bigger than that. It's got adhesive on the back. I, you probably can't see that, but it's got some 3M adhesive on the back there. So hopefully that'll work and I will, uh, it's getting close to bedtime now. So I'm gonna go ahead and head to bed and I will continue this in the morning. Once again, subscribe, that'd be fantastic. Please remember, I am not an electrician. This is my own concept. 
try it at your own risk. But I really want to get this on the printer. It looks like it's going to be fantastic, and I won't. Hopefully, I won't get any of that bed warpage that we saw in the earlier footage. So, stay tuned. I'll be back. Got to get some sleep. Good night. Mm -hmm.